elementary school, we learned about the water cycle, where water from the ocean evaporates to form clouds that move over land and drop fresh water as rain or snow. This precipitation soaks into the land and is stored underground, or flows into rivers that ultimately return to the ocean. Rivers are the circulatory system of our planet that provide vital habitat to fish and aquatic life, and move nutrients and sand downstream to replenish wetlands and beaches at the river's mouth. But you probably don't know the entire story. Before it gets to your home, water often travels hundreds or sometimes thousands of miles through canals and pipes from faraway mountains and rivers. And when we're done using it, the water enters the ocean, polluted, as a result of our wasteful water systems. Want to learn the real story of water? All life depends on water. Civilizations grew on the banks of rivers. People developed agriculture and learned to irrigate the land even in areas with limited rainfall. Over time, more water was needed to provide for the increasing population as many more cities and towns developed. These days, most of our rivers are dammed and diverted for human needs, often reducing downstream flows to not much more than a trickle. Under natural conditions, rainfall soaks into the ground, filling in spaces of the soil and rock. This groundwater reserve is called an aquifer. Over time, people figured out where these aquifers were, drilled into them, and built wells to pump the water out. Since aquifers are often connected to surface water, wells can also reduce flows in nearby rivers and streams. In many places around the world, the human population has outgrown local water supplies from lakes, rivers, dams, and wells. So how do communities with dwindling water supplies meet an ever-increasing demand? Many resort to importing water from remote areas and distant communities. Importing water to our neighborhoods from faraway places can be very energy intensive, especially when the water is pumped over mountains and through thousands of miles of pipeline and canals to its final destination. It's only a matter of time before those faraway rivers, lakes, and aquifers dry up. An increasing population, combined with changing rainfall patterns, and our wasteful use of water, is creating a global water crisis. Many people no longer have access to clean, fresh water. In fact, today, one in four rivers no longer flows to the ocean. Our coastal saltwater environments are suffering from this mismanagement of dwindling fresh water resources. We are reaching peak water, the limits of our water supply. Agriculture now accounts for over 70% of water use around the world and many agricultural practices have had tragic consequences. When farmers over-irrigate their fields, some of the water soaks into the soil, while the rest runs off into nearby rivers and streams, along with fertilizer and deadly herbicides and pesticides. These chemicals have helped increase the amount of food we can grow, but in the long run, they're harmful to the soil, native fish and wildlife, and can also soak into the ground to contaminate the groundwater below, making them harmful to us too. Once considered worthless swamps, wetlands are the filters of the ecosystem. Removing pollution, reducing flood damage, and helping the water soak into the ground for our use later. However, we've paved over many of our wetlands. In the U.S., more than 50% of coastal wetlands are now gone. In Louisiana, loss of wetlands and the buffer they provided against storms has left our coasts more vulnerable. If the development of these areas had kept natural processes in mind, the damage would have been much less.
Urban development not only pollutes our rivers and oceans, it can also reduce our water supply. Because paved areas flush most of the rainfall off the land, very little is able to soak into the ground to recharge aquifers. As the demand for water increases, the water in the underground aquifers decreases. In the U.S. alone, we are using groundwater four times faster than it can be replaced. In coastal areas, there's a fine balance between fresh water and salt water below the surface. As fresh water from the aquifer is overdrawn with limited opportunity for recharge, seawater moves into the void and takes its place. This saltwater intrusion can devastate an aquifer, rendering it useless as a source of fresh water. And the problem is only getting worse as our climate changes and sea levels rise. As urban areas grow, we have more roofs, streets, and pavement. Instead of the rainwater soaking into the soil, the water now runs over these surfaces, picking up pollutants in its path as it races into storm drains that empty into rivers and oceans. And as more area is paved over, the ever-increasing volume of water floods neighborhoods and those living downstream. With increased flooding, creeks and rivers are paved over to stop erosion, creating a concrete channel that moves the water even faster off the land. As population grows, urban development increases, which in turn increases the amount of water that goes down the drain. Traditional sewer systems collect all the wastewater from our homes and offices and send it to a centralized treatment plant. After residents, businesses, and industry have used the water, often only once. It's treated and released into the ocean or other nearby lakes and streams. And many cities are struggling with the dual problem of stricter regulations to decrease water pollution and an ever-increasing volume of wastewater. These centralized wastewater treatment plants use lots of energy to partially clean up the huge volumes of water we send down our drains, only to waste it by dumping it into the ocean. In California, about 20% of the state's total energy demand is spent moving, treating, delivering, using, and discharging water. Despite the massive amounts of energy used moving water around, California still finds itself in a water crisis. And California is not alone. Water management is often the duty of at least five separate agencies. Water supply, groundwater, flood control, water quality, and wastewater, or sewage. The choices made by one agency can impact the challenges of another. For example, when flood control engineers design systems to channel rainwater off the land, this wastes the water the supply guys need and creates a pollution problem that the water quality guys have to deal with. This disjointed water management creates an unnecessary waste of energy, contributing to climate change. And the crazy thing is, we end up with less water. To top it all off, some folks want to pump salt water out of the ocean to desalinate it for use in our homes and businesses. When we just got through dumping fresh water into the ocean that we already bought and paid for. Ocean desalination is being considered all around the country. Over 20 desalination factories are planned for the California coastline alone. Seawater desalination uses huge amounts of electricity often even more energy than importing fresh water from elsewhere. That's right, it takes more energy to remove salt from seawater than it does to transport it through hundreds of miles of pipes and canals over mountains and through valleys to your faucet. Moreover, the vast majority of proposed desalination plants would suck up and kill surrounding marine life. And for all the energy used and fish killed in the process, less than half of the water is drinkable. Think about it. We've done everything in our power to force much needed water off the land, and now our water managers want to pump that water back out of the ocean to remove the salt, killing fish in the process and wasting tons of energy. 
We're left with an uncoordinated, poorly managed, wasteful, polluting water system. That's the cycle of insanity. There must be a better way. By rethinking how we manage and use our water, we can begin to solve many of these problems. We've all learned about reducing, reusing, and recycling our trash. We need to learn to apply these three R's to all of our resources, especially water. The water supply guys use the term integrated water management. But like we said, they're only concerned with water supply and not the big picture. True integrated water management means holistic reform that integrates multiple agencies and members of the public and solves multiple problems beyond just meeting our ever-increasing water demands. If we take a closer look at how we use water at home, there are many opportunities to conserve and minimize our own water footprint. First of all, we can reduce our water consumption with low-flow shower heads, modern clothes washers, and other smart appliances. Although our sewer systems are designed to process human waste, we put many other things down our sewer lines, like kitchen scraps, cleaners, drugs, and other chemicals which can get into our rivers and ocean, harming fish and other aquatic life. We should think before we use our drains for waste disposal. In many homes, more than half of the water used goes to maintain a big green lawn, wasting water that we could drink or leave in place for fish and other wildlife. Plans adapted to our region's climate and soil require a lot less water and maintenance. Replacing a part of our lawn with native plants can save up to half of our household water use. An ocean-friendly garden conserves water and reduces polluted runoff helping to reduce flooding and keep pollution out of our creeks and coastal waters while giving you a beautiful garden full of new wildlife. A really fun alternative to boring grass. By contouring the land, adding dry creeks or seasonal ponds, and using permeable solutions for our walkways and driveways, runoff can soak into the soil to recharge local aquifers. We can also capture rain from our gutter with a simple rain barrel and keep it for reuse later. Much of the water that we use inside our homes can also be reused on our gardens. Called gray water, this is slowly being accepted as a great way to reuse the water from your clothes washer or bathtub to water the plants in your garden. Reusing our slightly used water in this way not only helps reduce our water demand, but it also reduces the amount of water we send to the wastewater treatment plant every day. These basic ideas can be applied on a larger scale within our neighborhood or our entire city. Think of the benefits reaped by entire neighborhoods that reduce water use, capture rainwater, and eliminate water pollution. We can redesign our communities to capture rain close to the source to filter back into the ground like the natural water cycle, or to store it for reuse during dry times. The streets in our neighborhood can be landscaped with contoured ditches, known as bioswales. These capture street runoff so trees and plants can use and filter the water. Where space is limited, Large underground cisterns can collect stormwater for later use. Pervious pavement can filter rainwater through parking lots, reducing runoff. Known as low impact development, it's rapidly catching on in areas along sensitive rivers and coasts, including Oregon, Chicago, Florida, and Rhode Island. Low impact development can transform the landscape from one that sheds water, causing flooding and water pollution, back to a more natural state that captures and absorbs water. From ocean-friendly gardens to green streets, all of these ideas catch rainwater where it falls for later reuse. So very little energy is needed to move it around. And these simple steps reduce unwanted runoff, allowing us to restore the natural rivers and wetland system in our communities.
Today's large industrial sewage plants collect huge volumes of water from an entire city and pump it all to a single location for treatment, where it is discharged into the nearest body of water, which in coastal communities is the ocean. This huge volume of water includes sewage, gray water, and stormwater runoff, not to mention viruses, chemicals, and nutrients that weren't totally filtered out during treatment. This affects marine life and the water quality at our beaches. And think about this. With rising sea levels, coastal treatment plants may soon be underwater. What are we gonna do then? The first step in solving this problem is to reduce our own waste. Household conservation and gray water use can significantly reduce the actual volume of wastewater ending up at the treatment plant every day. And it's not just water that we waste. The food scraps we toss down their disposal are mixed with sewage and sent to the wastewater treatment plants where they are separated and disposed of. Many cities have to transport all this solid waste hundreds of miles away for disposal. By composting our kitchen waste at home, we can help reduce the amount of waste that gets trucked away. Many treatment plants can generate energy from solid waste, and new technologies may make it possible to generate enough to operate the plant as well as provide a local source of biofuel. If we rethink how we transport and process wastewater, new opportunities arise. Many cities are now reclaiming wastewater, that's right, sewage, for reuse in our homes and businesses, or for direct recharge of aquifers. One of the best opportunities for wastewater is recycling it to drinking standards. Potable reuse is the process of purifying our wastewater to make it drinkable. Wastewater from homes and businesses is forced through very fine filters, allowing water molecules through while trapping dissolved salts and other impurities. Potable reuse is an efficient source of water because it makes use of water that is already in our local water system. And it is also good for the environment because it takes impurities out of the system, eliminating the need to discharge polluted wastewater into the ocean. Communities around the country are already drinking it as part of their normal water supply. Now is the time for a water management system that integrates the three R's. Reduce, reuse, recycle to address our water crisis and help reverse the damage caused by our current mismanaged system. This truly integrated water management program creates a holistic solution that incorporates ocean-friendly gardens and low-impact development to reduce our impact on the water supply. Gray water systems encourage the reuse of our precious water resources, and potable reuse recycles the water we've already paid for and transported. We have the unique opportunity to transform water management and meet our current and future needs with science and technology that is proven to work. Residents, businesses, and government agencies must all work together to seize this opportunity and change our water habits before it's too late.